give me your hand, give me your arm. I'm gonna lock arms with you. I'm gonna get you out of this thing. Cause here's how I look at it, Logan. This is my, this is, this is how, I, and this is coming from a guy that worked with psychologists and psychiatrists in clinical programs. Okay, this is my story to you. I'm looking at a picture right now in my office, and it's a deep dark cave. Because I know that most people that are going through what you what you've explained to me are in this deep dark cave and there's a big freaking hairy ass monster sitting down there right next to him. And I could be the Dallas Cowboy cheerleader screaming at the top. Come on, you can make it. Rah, rah, rah. And it doesn't mean a thing because they they don't want that. What they want is a guy like me to jump down in that cave and tell him. I'm here for you. I've got my sword. I've got my armor. And I'm going to help slay this dragon next to you. And then I'm going to shoot. Welcome to the Scratch Your Own Itch Podcast. The show about the things we think about, but don't ever talk about. My name is Logan Tyler Nelson, and I'm your host. These conversations are about creating a life worth living with a focus on sharing stories about battles in our heads. Topics range from depression, addiction, self-doubt, past traumas, and everyday compulsive thinking. And my hope is that the show will just shed some light on anyone in the dark that feels like they're alone in their daily struggles. Please take note that this show is not meant to be a replacement for a professional diagnosis or professional therapy. I am not a counselor or a therapist. Hey guys, I've got a, a champion of a man on today. His name is Arnie Fonseca Jr. Uh, Arnie has helped thousands of people over the past 30 years achieve their goals despite daunting challenges in their life. He has spoken at both national and international conferences on topics ranging from strength and wellness to the treatment of traumatic spinal cord and brain injuries. Arnie has worked with men for over 25 years, helping them overcome obstacles and challenges in their life. Arnie has also come on to this podcast to just share his own story and what he's had to do to overcome his depression, overcome suicidal thoughts, or OCD. Uh, so I want to just say thank you to Arnie for, man, for being on. Logan, thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to uh, to share with your uh, with your tribe, man. Ah, oh, dude, thank you. Um, so, I uh, I heard about you through um, Success Profiles. Uh, that's another podcast, and uh, you know you're probably on there because well, well you're successful, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, uh, when I, when I found you though, is, uh, one of the things I really loved about you was, um, your vulnerability and, and what you got into and also this idea of what, what you do is, is a person that gets people feeling good about themselves and you utilize short routines, but I, because I think there's, there's a huge uproar in our country nowadays where, um, our depression actually comes from people just not moving enough. And people not having the energy to to actually put on a smile, and uh, so we can get into that later and and talk about like your uh, your routine and what you like to do. But I I want to start off with who you are as a person, and um, this this question is um, I I believe the most vital question that we need to ask of ourselves is. Um, I guess so many people have have these itches, right, that keep coming up, that no matter how many times you scratch it, it just keeps coming back. And this itch becomes so hard to ignore that they have to make some big change in their life in order to scratch it. This itch is usually when their depression settles in or some sort of drug addiction that they have to actually overcome uh, becomes so problematic in their life that nobody is able to function around them so in your case what was the worst moment you ever had in your life that you think made you who you are today 
You know, uh, Logan, and, and um, I don't want um, I don't want your audience to um, to think um, that I'm not I, that I don't see what they see in the world. But um, um, probably the biggest obstacles that I've run into in my life, uh, Logan, is is not my own. Um, um, suicide or depression you know I think we all go through uh, some type of sadness in our lives um, but uh, you know I've had a number of people in my life that either have committed suicide or attempted it multiple times so you know I'm a big believer in seeing the world from someone else's point of view not to agree with it but to understand it you know and I've spoken at a number of uh, Groups and I do a lot of work with men in recovery, whether it's alcohol, drugs, uh, or other addictions. And I actually uh, a few months ago I spoke at an LGBT LGBT um, group, and the guy that invited me uh, was really worried that I was going to come in there and just be um, some kind of a rah rah motivational guy but I don't do that um, I come into any group that I'm in invited to Logan my number one goal is to add value to them to be vulnerable um, but I believe I can do that without having to have experienced uh, actual clinical depression because I haven't and I'm just being honest with you but I've been around it I've lived with it, and um, um, it's not fun. But a lot of that stuff that I, a lot of the things that I've developed over the last um, thirty some years, is working with individuals or families that are going through it, through traumatic injuries, whether they be a spinal cord or brain injury. Um, and believe me, it's real. Um, uh, sometimes it's chemical. And this is up for debate, and you know maybe I'm not sure if you guys get into this in your shows at all, but um, I don't I, I don't really look for uh, excuses. I look for results, Logan. I want I want everybody to be I want everybody to have success in their life, whatever however they want to define it. Just like today, I was doing a workshop, a presentation at uh, UPS, and it was wellness related. And, and part of what I said to everybody in there is, um, after I'm done here, they're, they're, you guys are going to be um, surrounded by people that are going to tell you how to eat, tell you how to exercise, tell you how to do these things. And You know, I'm not going to do that. But I, what I'm going to tell you to do is find what works for you and stay with it. And stay with it. You know, I just ran a 100-mile race this weekend. And the only advice I gave to people was just don't quit. Now, does it mean we keep doing the same dumb thing over and over again? No. But it means we you can slow down, pause, evaluate, and move on in life. Because that, that could, it could mean with a relationship. It could mean with a, a job. It could mean with a, uh, a work uh, situation. It could mean with anything. But if we continue down the road of, some, uh, of something that's causing us pain, then, you know, uh, that's our choice. See, because I believe a couple things, Logan. I believe that we're mostly driven by pain or pleasure. And I don't think anybody, you know, uh, chooses to smoke because uh, they want to have lung cancer and die an early death. You know, you know, when you ask somebody why they're smoking, they say, well, I'm smoking because I plan on having lung cancer and dying early and having all these debilitating problems that come with it. Of course not. What they're, what they're usually tell you is because, you know, their buddies smoke and they, they, they relax and they do it. It's a pleasure thing. Same with drinking. Their, their friends are drinking. It allows them to relax a little bit so they can have a good time. They're not drinking because they want to go out and get in a car accident and have a brain injury. Right? So, so, we, so that's kind of how I approach anything to do with sadness or depression because I, I believe in what's called a what's called the crazy eight 
And if, if any of your if any of your tribe can visualize a, a infinity symbol, on the left side is sadness and depression, and on the right side is anger. And I believe we enter that infinity sign, that crazy eight, on one of two sides. I believe that most, not all, but most women enter on sadness and depression. Most men enter on the angry side. They get angry. I get angry. I get angry all the time. It's not good. I have to evaluate why. I have to ask myself why, which is why I always have to ask somebody else, too, why. I want to, what's, what else could this mean? What else could this mean? Okay. Instead of just accepting it. So, and then, but the problem with anger, guys, is that you can only be angry so long because it's very fatiguing. You get tired. And then when we get tired, we get depressed and we just want to do nothing, sleep, do nothing. And until we been doing nothing long enough that we get our energy back and we get pissed off and angry again and this cycle continues for a lot of people and you know unless you're clinically uh, uh, diagnosed through a blood test through a, a chemical imbalance in your brain um, many times this can be classified as being bipolar I'm just it's just a it's just a uh, observation and, and, and the observation comes from working with a lot of people for a long, long time. And, um, but I, I believe there's two ways out of this, this cycle, this, uh, this crazy eight. What most people do, Logan, is they choose to go, if you were to draw an arrow at the center of this, arrow downward, most people, people choose to come out through uh, drugs, alcohol, bad behavior, something that numbs the, uh, the feeling because it just doesn't feel good to be depressed, does it? You know what I'm saying, Logan? No, it feels, feels horrible. No, no. I know exactly. Well, I, I want to I wanna kind of get into, um, like, if you could give us an example of any of your clients. Well, I, I will. You don't I'll have give to you give out names, names or anything like that because I want to. But go ahead. I want to give yeah. them respect. Go ahead, you. But yeah, just any any experiences in which they were dealing with this uh, depression or addiction, and well, how did you save them? Well, I wish I could. From well, going down the, the first one that comes to my mind is paths. my dad. You know, and this was uh, 37 years ago, and he tried to commit suicide. And um, I'm very vulnerable about it because at the time I was angry because I didn't understand this. I was just a kid, you know, 21 year old kid, and you know, big macho guy, you know, and what the heck? My former Marine dad's over here trying to kill himself. Didn't know what he was doing. So I'm thinking to myself, God, what a What's he doing? Why is he trying to embarrass me? And absolutely, surely wasn't fair of me to say that or think that. But that's what you do when you're ignorant and you don't know. And but now, after all these years and after working through some of this stuff, I I, I go back to my my thinking of why. What what else could be wrong here? Why would a forty, you know, say forty five year old former marine with three kids married? Why would he want to do that? What kind of pain must he have been in to want to commit suicide? And um, and I always come back to you know my dad did the best he knew how. He did the best. We all do. We I think we try to. I don't think anybody gets up every day and goes, um, today I'm going to have a bad day and just uh, commit suicide. Maybe, but I doubt if we get up and say I'm going to have a bad day. But, um, but going forward, to answer your question, what I try to get people to do, uh, Logan, if they ask for my help, is I try to get them to change their rules. Um, I work with a lot of people in their 90s. Okay, I, That was where I did some original research back in the 80s. And there's a beautiful thing about that age group, if you ever met somebody over the age of 90 is everything in life is very, you know, I'm 
I'm, I'm using my hand right now. It's a very gentle wave. There's no real high highs and there's no real low lows. Okay. And they just learn and, and some of it's innate. Some of it's just, they, it just comes to them. Some of it is because they've gone through things in their life, something very dramatic, deaths in their family, cancer, traumatic illness, injury. And for whatever reason, it made them hardier. A lot of them lived through World War One. I, I mean, excuse me, World War Two, or Korea, some war, and it just made them hardier. And so they learned, they learned. And remember now, most of their friends and family are dead. So they they've kind of made it out. They've they've survived all this. And so they, and I think part of the reason they've survived is because they learned not to oh not. They learn how to better respond to what life throws at them. And I'm a big believer in that, and I teach that. So what I help them to do is change their rules. So for these people, sometimes just waking up in the morning, they, they, they'll tell themselves, wow, another day to, to, to go out and live and explore life. But for a lot of people, a lot. They get up and have to have 20 things that have to go right for them to have a good day. Well, guess what? There's a good chance they're never going to have a good day. So one of the ways that I help people to overcome their depression is to, if it's not clinical, because then they need, they need to see medical professionals and, and uh, possibly get on the correct medication. But I really have them look at life and try to see it differently because they have to want to change change I can't make anybody change I can only suggest that they make some changes and change is hard you know if you if you google change it'll tell you it takes about 66 days to change I always tell people it takes about give it 90 days because that first month once you break out of that safe harbor where it's comfortable and it's comfortable, people that are very sad, Logan, it's comfortable being sad because they know, they know it, they're, they're used to it. And so to get them to want to, to move forward, it's hard. It's hard. It's like someone wants to lose weight or, you know, whatever, get out of a relationship. It's hard. So, um, that first month or so, is a lot of chaos, man, especially once they start to want to make some changes. It's a lot of chaos. And then uh, uh, and then you can start to install some new behaviors, like how we respond. There's a great book that I suggest to anybody in your audience read. It's called Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. It was written by Viktor Frankl, who was a psychiatrist and was a, a prisoner in uh, three different concentration camps in World War II, Nazi Germany. And um, boy, I tell you what, the main thing that I took away from that book, and there's a lot, but the main thing I took away was they can take everything away from us, everything, our name, every hair on your head, your family, everything. Except one thing, how we choose to respond to what life will throw at us. Because life will throw the kitchen sink at us. Life will be brutal. But we get to get up every day and choose how we're going to respond. And I don't mean, you know, be giddy when someone's, you know, trying to kill you. But at the same time, if things happen, you know, if, we're, if we overreact versus a measured response, then, you know, you know, we can worry. We can do all these things that are very negative and then we do all, we all do them. But if we don't know how to break out of that cycle, it could be our doom because all these things lead to horrific physical and psychological problems. But if we choose to, to respond in a positive way, you know, or we learn strategies that I teach on how to interrupt these things like uh, meditation, prayer, music, uh, exercise, 
um, anything that helps to interrupt. It's like I was working with a lady today at, a, at this conference, and she had back pain, and she went to a chiropractor. And the chiropractor did his thing, God bless him, did a little uh, adjustment. And there she was sitting, and I could look in her face, was pain. So I gave her some strategies that she can use anywhere to interrupt the pain in her back. And I go, and so to me, Logan, I gave her much more value than the chiropractor did. He gave her an adjustment, and she's still in pain means she's going to have to go back to him, pay him again, get another adjustment. And I don't know how long that's going to last. Some Sometimes, and I, I believe in chiropractic. I think they're, they're fine. But I'm also a believer in interrupting patterns and teaching people how to interrupt patterns to get their lives back in alignment as well as their back or whatever is out of alignment. Because so I, I compare the physical body to our mental and emotional um person as the same thing if our back interrupt pattern yeah we have i really to like do that i like that idea long. that you use Logan, let's be you actually you. interrupt I mean, the pattern you're a young guy and that's i mean i love talking to you young guys but uh you're gonna run into things almost every day that are gonna make you sad and depressed right i mean daily Right and right, right, and I, I mean, I'm not but like. I want to, I want to bring value. That's the thing. I'm not like. I and I know that like that as um, myself, like I, I am and only I know depressed. that you are, like I your am, tribe here and is really looking forward to you because I believe here's an acronym: hope. Hearing other people's experiences. A good friend of mine, who is the director of of a recovery facility here in Arizona. He brings me in every 90 days to talk to the men going through the program, drugs and alcohol mainly, but they're all depressed. And he always has to, when he introduces to me, he introduces me as a non-addict because I'm not an addict. And, but you know what? I make more friends in those groups because I'm giving them tools to move forward because I want every, I love them all. I love everybody in your audience. I love all these men as well. And I want and they and I want them to feel it. I want them to feel that this guy really cares about me. And I want them to feel it individually. I don't want them to feel that he's just talking to the group. I want them to feel as if what I'm saying, just like your audience, that I'm talking to them. I because you you guys all anybody everybody's hearing this. All of you have access, I'm, a, I'm assuming, to some type of medical professional that can help you with the right medication and the testing and all that good stuff. That's needed, very needed. But I want you to know that um, a guy like me is out here that understands you and will help you and will crawl over broken glass to help you figure out some strategies to help you make it through today. And then get up tomorrow and open your eyes and go, wow, I made it. And then get, then make it through tomorrow. And then the next day. And then the next day. And finally in a week. And then two weeks. And then a month. So six months from now, you can say, look at all the evidence I have that I can do this. I can do life. Because I have some tools. You know, I can build my life. I can create my life. Because I've got the tools and I don't need to fall back on, woe is me, woe is me, I can't do this anymore. And and knowing that you're not going to be perfect. But it's okay, because maybe you can text or call Arnie or, or Logan and say, hey man, I just need someone to talk to you today. Can you talk to me? You bet, man. Let's hop on a call. Anything, it's like a lifeline, like these shows that have lifelines and all that stuff. Anything to create a lifeline or or a way to break that pattern. Because the worst thing in the world that we do when we go through depression is isolation. And because, you know, I'm, I, I, as a Christian, I'm very spiritual. And I believe that God's there for me all the time. But I know that not a lot of people believe that. And that's okay. But they also have, a lot of people have their own spiritual um, identity. And that's fine too. 
whatever works. I don't really care. I want them to find something that works for them because this I know, Logan. When we rely on ourselves, it's not a good place to be, man. We need we need something besides ourselves because we let down ourselves all the time. And um, we need something besides us to make it through this place called Earth, this this life, okay? Because life is is tough, man. It's it's, it's a tough place. So we need tools. We need strategies. And so, so some of the things, these are some of the things that I help people plan, work through, and, and create for them. And there's, you know, different things, you know, whether it be uh, getting focus, um, creating that plan, what are the tools, strategies, skills they need to overcome. A lot of times, Logan, I found this, I found this, that. If they just had better skill sets in relationships or at work or in whatever they're trying to do, losing weight, making friends, if they just had some better skill sets, they feel better. They feel better. The problem is they don't they feel they feel horrible because they don't know what to do. I know this. There are things going on in my life right now, Logan, that I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And you know what I do? I've learned is well, there's stuff going on in my life with my with my son. I mean, um, and I've been doing this stuff for 30 years. Do you mind, do you mind years, opening man. up about those things right now? I don't this. None. And I know there's people in my family that are struggling right now. And I don't know what to do. And there's a lot of anxiety and, and depression going on in my home right now over this. And I'm a coach. I'm a coach, dude. This is my own family. And the only thing I can do is is love them, and but even I have a breaking point. But I know our breakthrough is near our breaking point, so I have to just hang on, hang on, and forgive myself for for losing it. But because I don't have answers to this, and I'm not telling I'm not telling every anybody in your audience that there's answers to every problem in their life. There's not, and that's where you need something besides yourself, man. This is right now. This is real right now in my life. And I'll be honest with you. Uh, to answer your other question, there was a time in 2009, and I don't know what, I really don't know what clinical depression feels like, guys, but I know this. When six people in your life, two of which were my parents, four, uh, the other four were close friends or people I work with, all died within, within one calendar year, and my, bank, and my business was going bankrupt. I always tell people this when I do presentations. I don't know why I didn't put a bullet in my head back then. I don't know why, uh, but I didn't. I don't. Uh, I, wh whatever feeling I had, I, it was that feeling. I mean, I know I can, I can see it now. I can visualize it. I can, I can see myself doubled up in my office. But I don't know if that. I don't know what what you call that. I don't. Is it clinical depression? I don't know. Um. I guess the best thing I did at that time, because I didn't really have a lot of people to talk to. I didn't. No, and I didn't. I mean, I'll be really honest with you. I didn't. I didn't. The only thing I thought to not do well, was it's, quit. It's some thought. Because I, I told myself. It's like when I go on these big grand adventures with my family, my daughter and her son-in-law. My son-in-law go with me sometimes, like the Grand Canyon. And I always do my training, Logan, knowing that I have to be ready in case whoever is going with me can't make it I have to be ready for them and maybe that's just because my whole life I've always been a leader and a, and a coach and a um, and maybe that's what God's prepared me for on this planet man maybe maybe that's why we're on I'm on this podcast for you today Logan maybe I'm supposed to maybe there's one person in your audience right now that needed to hear this message and needs instead of needing a another hope story he needs someone to reach through this podcast and just give him a hug man just give him a big hug and say man it's going to be okay i'm here for you and give me your hand give me your arm i'm gonna lock arms with you i'm gonna get you out of this thing because here's how i look at it logan this is my this is this is how I, and this is coming from a guy that worked with psychologists and psychiatrists in clinical programs okay this is my story to you. I'm looking at a picture right now in my office. 
and it's a deep, dark cave. Because I know that most people that are going through what, you, what you've explained to me are in this deep, dark cave, and there's a big, freaking, hairy-ass monster sitting down there right next to him. And I could be the Dallas Cowboy cheerleader screaming at the top, come on, you can make it, rah, rah, rah. And it doesn't mean a thing. Because they, they don't want that. What they want is a guy like me to jump down in that cave and tell him, I'm here for you. I've got my sword. I've got my armor. And I'm going to help slay this dragon next to you. And then I'm going to show you how to get out of here by locking arms with you. I'm going to walk you out of here. Shoulder to shoulder, man. We're doing this together because I'm not, I'm not going to let you quit. I'm going to bring you out of this thing. And... And that's, that's what I know that most people are truly, truly looking for, okay? Now, yeah, some want that story and that comfort of the story. But right now, there's a big hairy monster in that deep, dark cave where, most, where a lot of people are going through depression are at. And I know this. If I come down, if I'm willing to jump in there with them and get right in the middle of it, get right in the middle of that dragon and help them slay that thing, and then show them how to get out of that deep, dark, scary place. Man, I tell you what, that means a lot, Logan. That's life, man. That's how you get. That's how you start living again, brother. That's how you start living again without chemicals. You know what I'm saying? That's what I've learned how to do. That's what I've been taught how to do through clinicians in these programs because they knew that I wasn't an addict because I know a lot of people that work in those programs are addicts. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not, and they knew that. But this is what they taught me. This is what they taught me from working with thousands of cases that people are looking for. And that's when I went out and found that picture. And I put it in there in my office to remind me when I'm on the phone with somebody that that's what I'm trying to do. I'm telling you, I love that. I, 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 I want to thank you for this something podcast, like that. Put a picture up. Remind, of, um, it's reminding me of what I'm having a, to do with my own Just family. a reminder. Right it's now. a real gem. I do you know, it when I, I'm I writing. Had to, I had to get myself in a state today before I did my presentation because I, I wasn't in a good state before I presented. But the last thing that my audience wanted to hear was my stuff. No one cares about what I'm going through, Logan. No one. Okay. And and allowing me to share right now um, is bringing me great value as well. So I want you. To, I want to thank you for that, my friend. Hey guys, I gotta interrupt this real quick to do a call to action, as they call it in the podcasting world. I've got this call to action about: Have you ever had a story that you felt like you needed to share? story that you need to get off your chest and you have this imposter syndrome in which you think that it's not good enough to share but let's be honest any trauma that you've ever gone through needs to be shared so if you ever want your voice to be heard please let me know I'd love to help you with a podcast maybe writing books just isn't your thing but a podcast you're a talker. You know how to talk. Let's say you don't know how to talk. Well, I'll get you there. I'll help you out. Well, back to my interview. Oh, absolutely. My pleasure. Like, uh, this is what it's for. Um, it's, it, it, I'm, you know, you talk about not having, you know, a psychiatrist or uh, you talk about like if you're really depressed to go to a psychiatrist, and I totally recommend that for someone that really feels like they have clinical depression. But I'm telling you right now, first and foremost, that just sitting in a chair all day talking about your problems and not doing anything with it, it's not going to get you far. But what is going to get you far is by expressing yourself in some way. And that might be telling your story on a format of mm -hmm. of just telling it in your phone telling your story into a podcast yeah. telling your story into a youtube video telling your story 
to a friend that even you don't think is a friend, but maybe used to be a friend of yours, and and just hitting them up on Facebook and and messaging them and going, hey, this is what I'm going going because it just feel it feels yeah. heavy to have this stuff in our heads, and I just I think we have these thoughts that we think about a lot, and we just need to talk about That's more. Right. And I'm not saying that. Uh, you're going to find the answer right away. Like you're saying, Arnie, I love that you said that there's not always going to be an answer, but the questioning of it is going to allow you to at least move and take some sort of action instead of just sitting still. Yeah. And I think questioning, asking yourself the question of what does this mean is very important to everybody that that is listening to this right now. Yeah. Is, because, and, and also, I want to I want to I want to also emphasize too, and I know it's important to have someone to talk to, but guys, ladies, don't put expectations on other people that are unfair. You, I mean, and I'm not, and I'm, that's why I'm telling you, don't rely on yourself. You've got to have a higher power, guys. It's so critical, whatever that might be for you. Because if you put high expectations on somebody and you're going through a really hard time and they're not there for you, what are you going to do? Um, and if you do that, and if you then if you're yourself and you're trying to give do your self talk to yourself and say, "Well, I don't need that. I can talk my way out of this." Guess what? Might be in trouble. So you've got to have a place to go, and whether that's through meditation, prayer, uh, a, a spiritual source, you need that. We we got to find that guys, because if we don't do that, then we're gonna we're gonna di- nose dive into the to the the numbing, the alcohol, the drugs, the, the other bad behaviors. But but I you know if your friend is there for you, great. But the reason I say be careful is because the one big time that you really need them, um, they won't be there. And let me bring up another story about depression, and, and I never got a chance to address it, but I, there was a young lady I dated many years ago, beautiful lady, and um, sh- I found out uh, maybe three years ago uh, from somebody that came to do some work in my house, and we were, I talked to her, hey, you, did you go to school with that? And I mentioned her name, and he goes, oh, wow, she just committed suicide. I said, whoa, you're kidding me. And I only had one picture of her um, just recently. She was out on a beach in Alaska doing something. But beautiful. And, you know, I always like to ask these questions because I bring it up in my talks. You know, like why would a a guy like Chris, I think it's Chris Pennington or or the guy from um, a, a number of different people in the last few years that have committed suicide. And I could throw her in the mix, you know. You know, why would a beautiful, beautiful lady with a good job, architect, why would they commit suicide? And I only wish I could have been there to answer the question for her or give her a hug or uh, whatever. But, but obviously, I'm assuming that others were, but maybe they weren't there that day, that critical day. And that's what I don't want for your audience. Logan, I don't want your audience to, to that one critical day, de- depending on somebody to be there and they're not there. Find other sources. Find that spiritual source. Find that, um, whether it's, like I said, I'll say it again, meditation, prayer, music, something to interrupt that pattern. It's just like I was doing this weekend when I was running that 100 miles in the desert in the middle of the night. I had a number of uh, incantations and affirmations that I was constantly running through my head on a cadence beat. You know, uh, letting letting myself know that, you know, that I'm loved. Letting myself know that I'm worth it. Letting myself know all these things that I was going through had meaning to me. It was critical in bringing me through such an ordeal. The problem is, is most people don't do that. So when they get into a, a, an ordeal, whether it be a, a relationship um, situation or a job situation or a bullying situation or anything that creates stress or anxiety, an illness, if you don't have that to break it up, man, 
That's an awful hard fight to be in with some demon battling. That's that monster in that pit. And that, that demon will just wear you out. The pummel you. will wear you out. I agree. The, the worst thing is to actually pretend that you can just do everything mm -hmm. yourself. And I think um, that's why we need people mm -hmm. to look up to. And that's why we need people in our lives that yeah. we check in with multiple, on a regular basis. Multiple people. Multiple yeah. sources, guys. Yeah. Don't 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 lay all that on one person. It's not fair. It's not fair to them. No, it's not. And it's it, well, I mean, it's it also creates a sort of you, uh, dependency where go, like babe. if anything where 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 yeah, I mean, you, then all of a sudden you become completely relying on just this one person and when they're not there uh what do you do so you got to have a, a like you said you're using the word mm -hmm. tribe i guess but i i i want to kind of um i want to flip it back on to, to you because i'm really interested mm -hmm. in you arnie and um instead of just talking to uh our audience that i have um that i don't really have um because I really am interested in you, man. Uh, what are some things that you think about a lot that you kind of wish you mm -hmm. didn't think about? Well, uh, I'll be honest with you. Um, there's two. There's two natural fears in the world, Logan. We're born with, excuse me, two learned fears. Where there's two natural fears we're born with: the fear of falling. It's not the fear of heights. It's actually the fear of falling, and the fear of. Um, um, Loud noises. <laughs> Lose my thought for a second. I was jumping ahead. So those are, those are two natural fears, no matter what. I don't care who you are. But there's the, when they surveyed across the world, the planet, the two most common learned fears are I'm not enough and I'll never be loved. Okay? I'll never be loved. That's why people, when they go through relationships, they it's, it's devastation to their lives. And for men especially, the fear of not being enough. I'm not enough of this. I'm not enough. I'm not bringing home enough money. I'm not enough of a man. I'm not big enough, strong enough, good looking enough. I'm not enough. And women, they'll have their own for whatever reason. They have their not enoughs too. Okay. And um, so there are times, I'll be honest with you, that it's, um, and it's, uh, the other word for it is significance. I'm not, uh, especially since I, went through bankruptcy a few years ago and I lost everything, man, everything. And that's hard. You know, at my age in my fifties to lose it all, everything. But you know what I had the, uh, even to this day, just friends, just, just people. I'm not a lot of friends, but I'm building part of what I'm doing through my podcast answers for real men is building those friendships again. And you know what? It's working just by reaching out to guys. Cause Whatever you want in life, guys, you got to give. If you want more love, you got to give it. If you want to be, if you want more friends, you got to be more. You got to be a friend. If you want more significance, you got to lay it on people. You got to encourage them. You got to acknowledge them. Get it? If you. But what's but what's so great out of that yeah. is like it really does lift Absolutely. you up. Like when you make Absolutely. friends and you just try to help someone else out, you know, it's like. And and the the help can be like just something like like listen to the stuff that they're really excited about in life. Like for me at least, like I can tell right now that you're really excited about lifting people mm -hmm. up. And as badly as I want you to tell your story right now, like that's not, you're not you know you're more of a person that wants to give people tools yeah. to ignite them. I do, and you're and you're really getting my story. I mean, I can sit here all day long, but just like just like part of my story is this this weekend. Running my 100 miles since it's fresh in my mind. I called my fourth lap my anger lap because I had a bad experience this summer at, in the Grand Canyon with somebody that really let me down. He really let me down. And this 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 fourth lap, man, I just told myself, man, I am ready for anything. This is get it out of your system right now. This is your anger lap. Get it out. And man, I just I just just went hard and I drained it. I let it go, man. I just got it out of there. I just drained that that poison right out of my body. Okay, it's gone, man. 
And then the last lap was for love, man. It was for my son. It was for just for love. Because we have to get love above significance. We have to get love above security in our lives. We have to get love above needing to have excitement all the time in our life. Because once love is above everything in your life, it doesn't matter anymore, guys. It doesn't matter. If what you're doing for – if you're growing because you want to be a better husband, a better father, a better uh, lover, a better uh, friend, man, that's why you're growing. If you're contributing to other people because you want to be – you know, because you just love people and you're contributing beyond Logan and you're giving and you're giving and you're giving because you know that it's coming back, man. You know it's coming back. Man, that's that's where you want to be. You know, it's not about – Oh, I'm giving to this person because I because they're gonna give it to me back tomorrow. Bull it doesn't work that way. You're gonna get depressed because I'm giving because I love people. And you're right. I could tell this story all day long about being depressed. I could tell you the story when I was 14 years old when some coach told me that I wasn't I wasn't good enough. Get it? Significant, good enough to be in this line. And I just spoke at his funeral 40 years later. Didn't get along with this man. I I, I asked to speak at his funeral. And I, and I talked to 200 people that I didn't even know who the heck they were. And I asked this man to forgive me for all the bitterness I had in my heart for him for 40 freaking years. And I made a podcast out of it. Check it out. It's on my podcast. Because I was tired of that. I didn't want to deal with that anymore. It wasn't worth it. So, yeah. I mean, I go through all this stuff. but Maybe I'm wired differently, Logan. But I want... But I want people in your audience to know that they can make changes too. They can. Not Arnie, not Logan, not anybody else. I'm just here to hug them through it, man. I'm just here to love them through it and and, and to give them high fives because we need cheerleaders in our lives, man. We need cheerleaders. And I'm not going to sit here and rah-rah you, but I tell you what, when you do something, man, I'm going to hug you. I'm going to love on you, man, because I because I love people and I want you to be better. And um, and I know that you know that will probably come back to me in my life. I know that, but um, guess what? If it doesn't, it's okay because guess who? I love me. I can look in the mirror and say I love you, Arnie, ten times. So I'm okay. Hey, guys. I really hope you're enjoying the conversation that I'm having so far with my guest today. I'd really like to offer you guys an opportunity. Well, more so, actually... <laughs> an act of kindness. I would love if you guys took some time just to scroll down in the review section and write a review on what you think about the podcast and if it's affecting your life at all. If it is, that'd be awesome to just leave a review and I would love to take my favorite review and send you a gift. Send you a gift out of kindness. Something that's going to scratch your own itch, of course. And if it does, well, maybe you can also support the show by sharing it with someone as well. So, with that being said, you guys are enough, and you matter. Back to the show. Arnie, that's incredible, man. Seriously. I really like the authenticity of this idea of being able to look in the mirror and actually tell yourself that you love the, you. And I think we can work really hard for ourselves, but um, th th I, I say this time and time again. Guys, what works today probably won't work tomorrow. Like, it, like maybe a trick that you thought was going to work for today might not work next week. And so that's why constant change is good um, in some aspects. Like, that sort of like, like what's something in your life... Uh, Arnie, where you found out that uh, you had this habit that was working really well for you. Like, maybe it allowed you to express really great mm. writings uh, for your website, or really um, great talks for your speaking no, events. But I now mean, that when uh, you do it, I know physically, I know um, this, this physically habit that you used to I'm, use as I'm older no now, longer I know works. That, you know, uh, getting in shape, losing weight, all those things are a lot harder. And I know a lot of people my age. It's very depressing to them, and they don't know what to do about it. And, you know, but I, again, what did I do? I, I went out and, and used some of the same strategies that I was teaching this morning, and 
I just became an expert in those areas that I wanted to work on. So it's, it's very depressing for me to be on uh, on um, on computer stuff because I don't understand it. Didn't grow up with it. I was asking a guy earlier, right before you and I jumped on this, about how to go into iTunes and give people high reviews. I don't know how to do that. I, I every once in a while I stumble into it, but I couldn't tell you how to do it, and it drives me crazy. And um, but I'll figure it out because I'll ask some young guy like you to show me and step by step, and I'll write it down and, and practice it and practice it and practice. And pretty soon I'll understand it. But it, it's hard for me to do these things, and, and if I just kept banging my head against the wall, I would get depressed about it. So sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but I just sometimes getting away from it and breathing and meditating and pray, saying a prayer about it uh, helps. Sometimes not, but, uh, some, and then, but getting away from it, uh, but sometimes just persevering um, helps, but... Um, it, it, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm just like I'm just like anybody else, Logan. I mean, I got I got struggles too, man, every day, and things are things are shifting on me, whether they're physically, mentally, or emotionally. Um, the only thing that doesn't shift in my life is my spiritual world, and that's why I always teach people my spiritual world goes right in the center of my chest, Logan, and everything else, everything else is a crapshoot, man. Okay. Because in my world, the only thing that doesn't move is my spiritual life. And uh, so I'm ready for anything else. It doesn't matter. I mean, like Victor Frankl said, I can, I guess I could live in a piano box and I'll, I'll just make it work. But uh, I'm not going to enjoy it. and won't like it. It won't make me um, feel good. But it'll get me to the next step. And maybe the next step will get me back to where I need to be. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, I think feeling trapped. I think anxiety comes from feeling trapped. Yeah. Like right now, where I'm feeling the most. I think the best just, answer is always just take the right next the step that you think is the best thing for you, but. Over. And I have what to I think creates anxiety is thinking I about it too much I can't sit and, and trying to make the best. Because I used to. Yeah. But I have to, I have to give it to God. Okay. So that's that's where I help. That's where working with anybody with anxiety, I have to. They have to have resources to go to. Um, people. Um, or to. Uh, meditation, prayer, music, they have to have some go-to places to go to, to, uh, because they can't, it, yeah, really, resources, you know, call it, we would call it, exactly, but they do, because if we sit there and just sit in, sit in the, sit in the corner and suck our thumbs, that's not, that's not healthy, is it? It's not going to solve anything. Some go-to places to go to. It's still going to be there. <laughs> but isn't, it, but isn't it, but Logan... But yeah. Logan, if we keep going, but if we keep going, Logan, isn't it the darkest before the dawn? If there's daytime, isn't there going to be? Is there going to be? Isn't with night? Isn't isn't the day no, just, coming? If we just hang on, I mean, don't quit. And in, in a way, isn't, isn't that? A, you know, a, I believe, and I said it earlier. Isn't your breakthrough closest to your breaking yeah. point? I think it is. I think it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, hey, Arnie, um, you've said so many amazing things. Like, I can't even mm -hmm. uh, thank you enough for doing this. I just want to ask you a few questions before we wrap it up, and um, just say, uh, just give a sense of, uh, you know, like really ah, just to put a button a, on the end uh, of this conversation, camper. this very valuable and rich conversation we had today. Um, so thank you so much again. But uh, this first question I like to ask you is, um, what mm -hmm. is Arnie's spirit animal? <laughs> 
some kind of a green, you know, um, some kind of a green a panther. Um, nice. I love it. Um, what like is these, uh, a uh, juice? If Arnie yeah. was a juice, what yeah, juice like would he matcha, be? like um, I don't know, some kind of a. I drink a lot of these uh, kale and all those funky things. Some kind of a green, green food. Some kind of green food, dude. Like, like a matcha. <laughs> Kale. Sure, sure, sure. Um, I love it. I love it. Um, if you could bundle up like all of this advice that you've ever gotten love in yourself. your life, and I believe that uh, love you know, take it like a grain of salt. You. Advice is you were made. Is not you are, for everyone. You but if you could wrap it all up and potential. put it in a nice nugget God gave us amazing for everyone gifts. to eat on, look at all your what gifts that as little nugget of advice be? And and take time to explore life. Most people don't take time to explore life and explore your gifts. And the only way we're going to be able to explore our gifts is to, to go out and do things. Take take some risks. Take some challenges and unwrap those presents that God gave you. The last I like life. that. I like that. That's beautiful. Mm. That's beautiful. And then oh, wow. I always like to ask this question is, um, Gosh, that's a hard you kind of um, said a few of them, but just lastly, what was a blessing in disguise that recently um, happened to you? Man, oh, man, oh, man. Um, blessing in disguise, like stop. something that, um, you know. Something that worked out. Really worked uh, you. you know, I, I mean, I, I guess the 100-mile run, I mean, it was – it was a, um, I'll just use my sister. My sister and I were fighting like cats and dogs uh, a week before the event. And she ended up being my hero. She ended up showing <laughs> up and helping me for the entire weekend. And I mean, I'll never forget that my, my entire life. Be, be be open to to receiving as much as Logan be open to receiving. That's amazing. Sometimes we're too, we're amazing. too anxious to get I really I I receive. relate with that so much. I just had a I had a falling out with my sister recently as well, and um, and I think that it, everything happens for a reason. Sometimes you just need those. Yeah. Uh, this this amazing men's project I'm working on with uh, a couple guys that are Absolutely. young millennials like you. It's, and um, just uh, last to, but not to least, reach out uh, to men to help them to overcome. Uh, what's a new like you and I would talk about today, exciting uh, itch that their, you're excited to scratch? In their uh, relationships, in their finances, in their uh, in their health, and to help have to create a resource for men that um, is much needed to to help them to. Um, to climb out of that pit that, that need be, or just to climb the next mountain, whatever, whatever, whatever they want and, um, give them the tools to do that and, and the support and love that, uh, that men need today. Cause men are, are in a really bad place today in our society. We're very confused. We don't know, um, how to respond and react to things. The media is, uh, beating us up constantly and, um, we're either sinking back deeper or we're overreacting, getting angry. So um, that's that's my excitement. That's my vision. That's what Answers for Real Men is all about. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, Answers for Real Men. What a great – I love that. I love that brand, Answers for Real Men. I love it. It's really cool, really neat. Um, but, hey, I know someone's going to connect with you uh, because uh, the way that I um, – have conducted mm -hmm. this podcast. I always want someone to, uh, you know, share some sort of quote, some sort of uh, quote that you heard by Instagramming it, by doing a Twitter tweet, whatever they call them, Twitter tweet, <laughs> uh, doing a mm -hmm. Facebook 
message or anything to just reach out and start putting action in your life because I think when you take a quote from something you start actually implementing that in your life and there's been a bunch of awesome amazing quotes that Arnie's laid out today but if people actually wanted to contact you personally uh, Arnie where would they go? Well um, let me give you my phone number first they can call me anytime or text me 602-390-9144 just just text me or Call me, leave a message. Um, I'm old school. I still listen to my messages. 602-390-9144. Uh, you can email me. I'm going to give you my Gmail. I've got a number. I'm going to give you my Gmail right now. That way I make sure I get it. Uh, Arnie Fonseca Jr. at gmail.com. That's just all one word, obviously. Arnie Fonseca. F, uh, and you, it'll be in the show notes. Fonseca Jr. at gmail.com. Uh, you can go to my website, uh, TotalRecoveryArizona.com. That's my coaching website, TotalRecoveryArizona.com. You can also go to my podcast website, which is AnswersForRealMen.com. AnswersForRealMen.com. We're, we're, we're going to be working on that, but for right now, that works. Uh, you can go to iTunes and check out my podcast, Answers for Real Men. And you can uh, go to Facebook and look me up, Arnie Fonseca Jr., Say hi, join, ask to be my friend, um, come to my group, my Facebook group, which is Ant, uh, Answers for Real Men. Come on in there if you're a guy. If you're a lady, I had to tell my daughter she can't come in yesterday, but that's okay. She was laughing about it. But um, <laughs> but come on in there. We have some great conversations. We get deep, man. We get raw, and um, that's what it's all about, guys. But, uh, hey, I talk to anybody, ladies. I, I have clients that are women, and we, we – we get personal about it. We uh, we find out what the, what the issues are, and uh, I want I want results. I don't want I don't want uh, people that just uh, don't know how to take care of themselves. I want you to be. I want to help you climb a mountain. I don't want to just help you get out of a hole. I want I want you to climb a mountain. I love it, man. Thank you so much again for being on Scratch Your Own Itch. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, there you have it. Another episode of the Scratch Your Own Itch podcast. Thank you guys so much for supporting the show by listening all the time. Arnie was, he's a hes a very, 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 very huge champion of yours, as you can tell. He just has also a way of um, speaking uh, and just is wired in a very... Um, motivational way, even though he says he's not rah-rah, he's very, very rah-rah in my head, meaning like the guy can pull you out of that cave that you're in right now. So thank you guys so much for listening. This Honestly, this podcast means the world to me, so thank you guys so much. And I just want to ask you to, real quickly, if you could, I bet you're going to, not do it, but I'm going to ask anyway. Please just go on your phone and go on the iTunes review or go on the Android or podcast reviews and just leave a note of what you're thinking about this podcast and how it can com- become better. And I'm totally open to suggestions. I would love, 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 love to hear from you because if you hear this and you want me to read out your review, I would love to feature you on the show. Thank you guys again for taking the time to listen to this. And don't ever forget, you matter and you're not.